Now that we've completed learning about some elements of external viscous flows, let us quickly summarize our learnings. We discussed the importance of two components of forces in external flows for engineering applications, the lift and drag forces. During this discussion, we learned about different ways of reducing drag and increasing lift such as streamlining and cambering. Moreover, a brief discussion on high lift devices such as flaps and slats helped us understand how flights take off and land. Next, we looked into the physics of flow separation in external flows and its importance in drag minimization and highlighted some correlations available in literature for predicting the separation point for both laminar and turbulent flows. Another important branch of external viscous flows is the free shear flows. And we learned about jets, wakes, and mixing layers. Having covered both laminar and turbulent regimes in these flows, and describing the necessary correlations to predict their spreading rates, we are now able to appreciate the amount of effort that goes into designing a rocket nozzle or an aircraft wing. Although it is not important to remember these correlations, it is critical to understand that predicting spreading rates for laminar flow regimes are easy, while Turbulent regimes require experimental backing to obtain certain parameters. We can always rely on computational fluid dynamics for obtaining more accurate predictions than what we can get from these correlations. However, these correlations are still applied for model validation in CFD before obtaining the results for modifying engineering designs.